magical happens. What am I talking about? Now, what do you feel if you can wake up and see things clearly? It's not a luxury for a lot of us because, again, a lot of us are very dependent on glasses because of nearsightedness. Now, here at Prince Scott Medical Centre, there's a new uh, technique called LASIK, laser-assisted in situ keratomeliosis, where it's a corrective eye surgery for people with myopia or uh, nearsightedness and eczematism. But before we explore the technique a little bit in details, why don't we find out more about Prince Scott Medical Centre? Prince Scott Medical Centre is a private healthcare facility located in 39 Jalan Kiaping, Kuala Lumpur. Now with futuristically designed 300 bed centres with revolutionary facilities and high standards of patient care, this medical centre is fully owned by Petronas. The scope of services includes cosmetology, cardiology, burns treatment, plastic surgery and solutions for wellness for men, women and children's treatment and consultancy. For your information, Prince Scott Medical Centre has collaboration with the Medical University of Vienna, where they support local expertise and implement system for quality assurance. The Medical University of Vienna also supports them directly from its headquarters in Austria, lending its expertise in everything from telemedicine to consultancy and even marketing. Okay, doctor, can you tell us what is LASIK? Okay, LASIK stands for a procedure using LASIK to change the curvature of the cornea. This is suitable for someone who is myopic. In other words, they cannot see far very well, but they can see near very well. This is due to the image, instead of being focused on the retina, is focused in front. And why is it focused in front? Because the, the refractive or converging power is too much, the eye is too curved, therefore we flatten it. So that we bring the focus right onto the macula so to get sharp vision. And this is calculated very uh, precisely with the computer. Not everyone is suitable, only those who have absolutely healthy eyes. That's why in the pre-operative assessment, we make sure that we do a slit length examination where the cornea is examined to make sure it's normal. And we also look at inside the eye, make sure everything is normal and ensure that the lens is normal too. Because if someone has cataract, LASIK will not help them. And also, we take a photograph, we assess the retina to make sure everything is normal and look at the optic nerve to make sure they have no glaucoma. So we do LASIK only for absolutely healthy eyes. The risk mainly, uh, one number common side effect is that dry eyes. But we know that now we have what something called bladeless LASIK. In those days where there was no bladeless system, where they used blade, there were many complications related to the flat formation. But sometimes the flap can be lost or buttonhole, you know, because of the blade procedure. Now with the bladeless, the complication is very, very minimal. And if you look at the literature in the world now, it's hardly heard of any complication except for dry eyes. And for those who have very high power, the power tend to regress. Maybe if they have 700, they have a mere residue of 100 power or so. We know that the LASIK is only done on eyes that is perfect, healthy, so we do pre-op assessment to make sure the health of the eye. Number two, we have to calculate it very accurately, which means the assessment of the curvature and we have to calculate the refractive power of the eye to ensure that the calculation by the computer will be perfect because we're talking about very, very small well, micron correction day. Before the operation day, two days before that, they have to put antibiotics four times a day to ensure the eye is clean. And then on the operation day, they come in the morning, they can have normal breakfast as usual, come with a very high spirit, feeling very happy, visualising that things are going to go well. And usually the procedure is done after one hour so that the patient is rested. And then if the procedure is done around 10 o'clock, usually the patient can go home by 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock. And most of my patients can go to work by the next day because the recovery is very good. During the assessment process, about 12 types of tests will be done to ensure that the patient is suitable for the LASIK procedure. The first step is the auto-refractor, a fast way to check the power of the eye. Now the next step is checking the power of the current glasses used by the patient. Followed by checking the visual equity, and next they will take a test called pachymetry or visante, where the thickness of the cornea is measured. Then the patient will also have their eyes aberration measured with an aberometer, followed by the Wasker test. 
Next time we go through a refraction test, a more comprehensive type of an eye check. After all of this, while waiting for his cycle drops, he will be educated with a video explaining how is the operation procedure is going to be. And then he will receive cycle drops to dilate his eyes. Now this is to ensure it is an accurate assessment of the power of his eye. Next, they will do a test called what to white to check the size of the cornea. And the last step is taking a fundus photo where a picture of the retina will be taken. The final step is the review by Professor Dr. Muhaya. Now using the test result, she will determine whether the patients are a suitable candidate for the LASIK procedure. Let's consider LASIK as it is very, very safe. Well, Zanus has finished their pre-assessment and they are waiting for their operation date. What do they have to do? Nothing except antibiotic drops four times a day. So guys, stay tuned for last week part two where we will be covering the operation procedure itself. Malaysia, stay healthy. I'm Yasmin, signing off.